Are you ready to quit your nine to five and pursue your passion full time? We'll show you how. Create a business doing what you love. You're listening to the Quit Your Nine to Five podcast with your hosts, Tamisha and Damian Duncan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another amazing episode of the Quit Your 9 to 5 Academy. Today, we have we have treats for you guys every day. But this day is another special treat because we have the beautiful Maya Ellis here. How are you, sweetheart? I'm doing well. How are you? I am great. I'm excited to have Maya on the show. Maya is a phenomenal woman. She's doing a lot of big things here in her business, and I want her to share what she does with you because... What she talks about is content creation. Maya's superpower is teaching women how to package their purpose into a magnetic content and into magnetic content and irresistible products so that they can build a powerful online brand. So I wanted to bring Maya onto the show today because I wanted to talk to you guys about how to exactly do that, creating content for your business. You know, we keep a lot of things and thoughts and plans in our head. We don't really know how to deliver that to our audience. We don't know how to package. I always say I I package, I teach people how to package their genius. So we don't, a lot of people don't know how to package their genius. So I wanted to hear from someone else in the same field that could really talk to you guys about how to really create perfect content that will grab your ideal clients and get them to buy from you. So welcome to the show, Maya. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for that introduction. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. So I gave a little introduction, but I would love for you to share a little bit about what you do in your business with the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So I work with a lot of personal brands. So these are experts that are authors and speakers, bloggers, people that really have a lot of information that they want to get out into the world. And Um, match their expertise with their passion and with their purpose. So my job is to help them create content that they can use to engage with their audience. They can use it to inspire the audience and they can use it to also um, turn this content into premium content and products that they can use to monetize as well. So obviously I want the people I work with to do things that is meaningful to them and connect with people that are really going to understand their purpose, but I also want them to be able to make money. So that is my job as a content and branding strategist. Absolutely. I love that. And so how long have you been doing this work? Um, Well, I started, I've probably been doing coaching for like a year and a half now. Um, But I started, you know, making money online back in 2008 when I was doing web and graphic design. So because of my start back in 2008, that's how I ended up where I am now. Because I was working with the same types of people and just figuring out how to run a business myself. And then once I got clear on my audience to primarily African-American women who have an expertise and run nonprofits or run businesses where they're teaching or training or anything that, you know, has to do with, um, sharing information. I started working with them through web and graphic design, but I realized that they weren't really clear on how to use strategy to drive traffic to their website after they made that investment to have their website built. They had no idea how to execute any type of strategy to get to their website. So that's why I ended up starting to teach and create online courses and and do some coaching. Cool. So I love that you have a connection with your audience. And a lot of times that's what, you know, we, we try to teach our, our clients and the people that follow us is to really be in tune with what your audience needs. So you started off doing something totally different through website and graphic design, but you saw the need that, you know, once these, these individuals you, utilized your services for this, the next step, they were still kind of in the gray area. And so they needed help with that. And you, you recognized the need and you took advantage of that by showing and sharing your expertise to up-level their business, which in turn up-leveled your business. So it's good to hear that, you know, you, just a lesson for all you guys that are listeners out there, you know, pay attention to what's going on around you. Pay attention to what the people are. Sometimes they're not asking for it because they don't know they need it. So you have to really look at the surroundings and look at the, what's missing in your industry. A lot of times we're afraid. We're like, well, I don't know what to create. And that's part of knowing what to create just by paying attention to what's missing. Even if you do one piece, what is the next step? What would they do at that next step? And how can you help them propel themselves in that next step? So that's genius. So 
let me ask you, let's just get right to it in regards to content. So I know you talk a lot about creating content. Do you have a strategy or a system that you use to, to help your clients create content? Like how do you come up with the ideas or if somebody came to you and said, I want to create a program or I want to create a course, but I don't know where to start. What's the process that you take them through? Yeah, so I take them through the process that I use myself for everything that I do in my business. So even when I decided that I wanted to start coaching, I paid attention again to what people were struggling with, to what they didn't know that they needed. And some people felt like they understood what they needed. So I paid attention to the questions that people were asking me. And that's all good content really is. It's answering a very, very simple question. And I think that simplicity is really hard for people to capture. And that's why sometimes it could be hard for people to create really good, valuable content because they're thinking way too large when people just want a simple answer, a simple response to something that they are struggling with. And this even goes with, you know, creating workshops and masterclasses, webinars, online courses. Um, one mistake that I made and one mistake that I see a lot of new content creators doing when they, when they make their first online course is that it's just way too vague. It's answering way too many questions instead of answering one very simple and specific question in detail. And the reason it's bad to try to answer a whole bunch of, bunch of questions is because when you break down your sales page and you break down everything that's going to go inside of this course, a lot of people in they'll look at it and maybe one of the modules will be something that they're interested in and they'll be like, oh, but like 90% of the course isn't something that I need. Whereas if you would have created an entire course based on just one of the modules, when people come to the sales page, they're like, this is exactly what I need. There's no extra fluff or there's no extra things that I feel like I already know. So when you're creating content, you always want to think about what is it that my audience is struggling with? What are the questions that they would ask? And then create content based on answering just one question. And that also helps you diversify your content instead of trying to put all of the answers in one platform. Yeah, I know. I've seen um, thousands, not thousands, but I've seen a lot of courses, you know, even me kind of looking online and it might have one or two things that you're like, oh, I need that. But the other stuff you're like, nah, I don't know that I need that. Or they're not really sure how to articulate the process. So they throw in a bunch of fluff in fact, I used to do that when I first started creating courses. I'm like, well, this sounds good and this sounds good, but it's not really what they need. And so sometimes we overfill with information overload, that they, things that they don't need, when if you just stick to what they need and break that down, you would be able to create a more robust course where they're looking at it and they're like, oh, this is it. Let me, let me buy this right now. And also, <clears throat> for all the listeners who are creating content for everyone, I can raise my hand because I'm one of those everyone people or used to be. You know, when you try to serve everyone, you serve no one. So you definitely have to get clarity. You have to create a niche to get rich. And then after you get rich from that niche, then you get rich from other niches. I like that. Yes. Niche to get rich. I'm feeling that. That's great. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. Now, it's one thing to create content and you have the kind of strategy where you walk through creating content, but now you have to actually drive people to your website or drive traffic to see this content that you've created. So what are some of the best practices that you use to actually draw an audience or get traffic to actually look at what you're creating? Um, two of the things that I really focus on when I want to drive traffic to my content, um, first is actually just having conversations with people in my audience and just treating them like people instead of numbers. I think that's so important. And one of the things that people are consistently saying about me is like, they feel like they know me or they feel like I create content that specifically speaks to them. Mm -hmm. And it does because I actually have conversations with them. I actually engage with them outside of saying, Hey, go to my blog post. You know, I say, Hey, what are you struggling with in business? How would I be able to serve you? How is your day going? How's that project that you were working on last week? So I build genuine relationships with the people that support my business. So people will support you if you support them and you support their end goal. So that's the first way that I get people to go to my content. The second way that I get people to go to my content is by creating headlines that's actually going to capture their attention. I think a lot of people underestimate how important the headline is just because it's a small part of your content 
doesn't mean that it's not important. It's one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. So you want to create headlines that address a specific issue or that really speak to the pain points of your audience, or at least um, kind of build up some curiosity a little bit. So you want to talk about the different reasons people are or not succeeding, or you want to talk about five ways they can achieve something or, you know, give people lists, give people steps, give people reasons and ways. People really like things that are, that are going to be broken down into simple lists. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And to your point, just to piggyback off of that a little bit, the headline is so important because that's the first thing that they see. So it has to be something that's going to make them want to know more. So you mentioned it, you know, having that bit of curiosity for them to say, what is this about? I, you know, I want to know the answer to this question. Or I want to know these, these steps that she's going to give me. And many people don't pay attention to simple things like the headline when that is probably the most important thing because you can have an amazing blog post or an amazing website or an amazing course. But if that first line doesn't hook them, then what's the point? It's not, it's going to go on deaf ears. So I'm exactly. Glad. And I don't know if it was mentioned, but you know, you, your client has to identify themselves with you. It has, you have to be able to show some kind of relevancy to them in order to draw them in, you know. Right, absolutely. And again, if you are answering a question, your headline should be literally answering a question. So if somebody says, hey, Maya, how do I build a following on Twitter? Then my headline would be five different ways you can build your following on Twitter when you've been struggling with engagement. You want it to be very specific in obviously answering a question. Yeah. And so... With that being said, you talk a lot about, you know, building relationships with people and talking to your audience. So I'm my, my, well, let me not assume, let me ask you. So what are some of the platforms that you use to connect with your audience? Um, I primarily use Twitter because I just feel like it's an ongoing conversation. I also use my Facebook group, which I invite people from Twitter to just go inside of my Facebook group. I use live video, primarily Periscope, when I do do live video. So I'm on Periscope maybe like once or twice a week. I used to be on it more frequently. Mm -hmm. But um, definitely live video is a great way to connect with your audience because there's really no other way to build trust quicker than live video unless you're actually meeting some, somebody face-to-face. -face. Right. Cool. So we hear a lot of people talking about um, creating a content calendar. So I want you to kind of talk to the audience about, first of all, what a content calendar is and if that is a necessary tool that they need to be using in their business. Yeah, sure. So content calendar, the way I use my content calendar is I'll look at my, um, I'll decide first what I do is I decide what is it that I want to sell or where is it that I want to lead people? Because the whole point of content marketing is so that you can, of course, build your brand, build your list, you know, make money. But it's like, how are you going to make money? Why is it that you want to build your list? Like, where are these people going? So if I know that I have a launch coming up for a course, all of my content for the next month is going to be about what I want to teach inside of that course. If you know that you have a product that you want to release at the end of the month, all of your content for the month needs to be, you know, in, it needs to be directly related to um, what you're going to be selling. So you need to be very clear. And even if you're not selling anything yet, if you want to build your brand as an expert in a specific industry, all of your content for that month or the next 60 days or the next 90 days needs to be directly correlated to how you want to be seen online. So that's the first thing about creating a content calendar. You have to decide what is it that I'm really trying to put out there? What is it that I'm marketing? And then you need to decide the different platforms that you're going to use. So on my content calendar, I have my Instagram, I have um, Periscope, I have email, I have blog posts, and I have webinars. Then I say, okay, well, how many times am I going to Periscope? How many times am I going to blog? How many times am I going to do a webinar? And you need to be realistic about the time frames for these, right? Because people come up with all of these unrealistic ideas, like I'm going to blog four times a week, and I'm going to do two webinars a week, and I'm going to be on live video twice a day. And we literally do not have that time, especially if you're still at a nine to five. Like I do this full time and it's still hard for me to get out as much content as I would like. So it's not about the quantity of your content. It's really about the quality of your content. So even if you're only putting out 
two blog posts per month, you can do two blog posts and a webinar and it could be something that's really, really impactful rather than trying to do, you know, five blog posts a, a per week and they're only like a hundred word blog posts. That's really not going to make a difference with mm -hmm. anybody. If it's not making an impact, then it's pretty much just a waste of your time and a waste of your reader's time. Yeah. So I realistically look at my calendar and decide, okay, how many times this month do I want to blog? How many times can I do a webinar? Am I even going to do Periscope this month? Am I going to be sending out any emails this month? Like, what can I realistically fit inside of this month and really stick to? So that is how I create my calendar. I'm so glad, Maya, that you mentioned that about, you know, re being really realistic with your expectations, your goals, your time, because I think as especially my females out there that are listening, we put unnecessary um, strains and pressure on us to deliver, especially when we're watching what everybody else is doing on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, and we feel like we got to compete with the masses. So we put this unnecessary pressure and I've done it. I, I do it all the time. Actually, I'm putting this unnecessary pressure. Like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And we're human. But I love how you said, you know, first of all, we, we know that quality is so much better than quantity. So even if it's not, you know, even if it's two blog posts a month or if you're doing, you know, a Periscope, you know, one big maybe Periscope or one big webinar that you're doing that for that month and then you have smaller other pieces of content that you're pushing, make sure that the quality is behind that project versus just putting out, you know, for a blog post that's you're just putting out content for the sake of saying you posted something. But it's not moving right. anybody. It's not making an impact. So you're really literally wasting your time. Yes, absolutely. And I, and I want people to consider like, instead of trying to put out three blog posts this week, how can I make this one blog post better than if I take time away from it to go work on other blog posts. So instead of trying to go work on a second or third blog post, can I include a worksheet with this? Can I include some type of workbook with this? Like, how can you make this one piece of content a better version than what you would have had if you try to squeeze in other pieces of content? Mm -hmm. So I know that you talk a lot about list building and that we know is very important to a sustainable business because, you know, your list is, is your goal. That's how you create an audience of, you know, your tribe where that tribe stays with you versus just relying on your followers on Instagram or Facebook. We don't control those platforms. So when Instagram or fa Facebook wants to change their algorithm or shut it down or shut your account down, it's a wrap. So you have to be very diligent in building your list. And a lot of questions that I get a lot, and I'm going to flip the question to you is, you know, people are, a lot of people are afraid to build a list because they don't know, you know, when we talk about list building, that means you're giving an offer away or something away, quote unquote, for free in exchange for somebody's name and email address. And this person that you, they're, they're, they're opting into something of value that you should be giving them. So this is how you're building your list. But a lot of people have a hard time trying to determine what should I give away for free versus what people should pay for. And that's why I think a lot of people shy away from building lists because they're like, well, I'm not gonna, if I tell them that or if I give them this, they're not going to buy from me. So how do you determine what is something that you should give away for free in your in your special offer, I like to call it your juicy offer versus something that you want people to pay for? Mm, this is a really, really good question. Now, the first thing I want to say is when you're an expert in something, you have so much knowledge in your expertise that you could give away stuff for free all day and still have things left over to sell. Like that's how much I know about content. That's how much I know about branding. That's how confident you need to be in your expertise. Now, when it comes to deciding what exactly do I give away for free and what exactly um, do I pay for, I have two different philosophies with this. The first one is, is you want to give away for free the things what people should be doing and why they should be doing it. And the things that people pay for is how they should be doing it, because this really determines what people are willing to invest. So if people do not have the money to invest, they're gonna to have to invest the time to go figure out how to do it themselves. But if people don't have the time to figure it out, they're gonna pay you to teach them how to figure it out themselves, right? right. So if I say, um, this is what you need to do to drive more traffic to your blog. So maybe I say, you need to tweet and you need to, um, do a Facebook ad. And then my how is like, here are the things that you need to tweet 
And here is exactly how you would create your Facebook ad. So that is the difference. And then you also want to create uh, free content that tells people why things are important because like we were saying before like my clients didn't even really know the right things to ask me because they didn't know that it was important so also educating people on why what you're selling is important for them allows people to start thinking of oh maybe i should be investing in this like why you need to be building your brand if you want to make money online or why you need to be creating content if you want to build trust paid content um, so my second thought regarding free content versus paid content is knowing where you need your audience to be before they can hire you. So like I'm right now in a place where I want to work with experts and I kind of shy away from working with beginners. So I give them enough know how content to be able to do things on their own. So by the time they get to a certain part in their career or, you know, their, their blogging business that they feel comfortable enough to hire me mm -hmm. because a lot of the times people want to make the investment but there's like this mindset where they're not yet ready or they don't feel like they know enough yet to work with you so i want to make sure that i'm helping my audience feel like they know enough that they can hire me and that's the type of free content that i give out too cool and that makes a lot of sense so you are grooming your clients to be in the position where you want them to be it makes perfect sense and that's what we all need to be doing so that you you're making sure that you're getting more of the juicy dreamy ideal clients that you want to work with that they're prepared to to receive what you have to offer when they come to you so that takes time and effort for you to really master knowing your ideal client master knowing what it is that you have to deliver to the world and then how to structure that content so that it's naturally moving them across in that funnel or in that process that you want them to be in so before we wrap up the interview you know we always have to get up into your business so I want to ask you as an entrepreneur what is something that you wish the Maya a year and a half ago knew that you now know that you would have done differently in your business or if there's anything any any piece of advice that you would give somebody who's kind of you know starting out in the entrepreneurship game that you said if somebody told me this a year and a half ago i would have been better off hmm. um i think the advice that i would give to anybody and to myself is to be be consistent be persistent and persevere in the things that made you successful because i think what happens is we'll do something that makes us successful and then we'll forget how we got there and then start trying new things and it's okay to try new things, but don't give up on the things that got you to where you are in the first place. Great, awesome piece of advice, because sometimes we feel like, oh, we've done that, we've mastered that, we have to move on, but that's what brought the people to you in the first place. And then you move on and then you don't get the same results and you're like, well, what happened? So excellent piece of advice. Has there any ever been an, a time in your business where you felt like giving up, where you felt like, oh my God, why did I, you know, who am I to be doing this? Because I feel like a lot of us female entrepreneurs get stuck in that space where we beat up ourselves. And I think it helps to hear other successful entrepreneurs that we're human and we go through the same thing. So is there an experience that you can share that you may have felt like you were in a crossroads or things weren't going the way you wanted them to go? And then how did you get out of that? Yeah, so there's definitely times in life and business where I'm just like, mm, something about this doesn't really feel right. And that's usually um, a place in my business where I need to kind of shift directions, where I need to elevate to like a new, um, add something new to the business. For example, when, when I got sick of design, I was like, something about this doesn't quite feel right. I need to be, you know, including strategy. I need to coach people. Um, so when you get to that place in your business, you just want to take a step back and you want to think, is this the way I'm supposed to be serving my audience or is there something different that I'm supposed to be doing? And of course, I always say, pray on it as well. Yes. So Maya, is there anything that you're currently working on that you want to share with the audience? Uh, so right now, uh, my audience is going through um, a challenge right now that I have called the Get Paid Challenge. So it's just really teaching people how to be comfortable with pitching and promoting themselves online. Because I know it can be scary to ask for money. Yeah. Um, so if you go to mayaelias.com slash get paid, you can sign up for the challenge. And if you're a little bit late, it will happen again. So it'll at least get you on the wait list. But this is a really, really valuable challenge. Somebody, um, one of my students actually just told me she's in the challenge now. She just got her first four-figure client. So I'm excited to hear nice. about that. Nice. A lot of people have been getting success. So definitely sign up for that challenge. Exciting. So where can everyone find you online, Maya? 
you can find me online everywhere at Maya Elias, obviously on my website at mayaelias.com. And if you want to join my free Facebook group where there's just a bunch of content creators supporting each other and asking me for advice, of course, you can join at bit.ly slash content club. Nice. Maya, thank you so much. I think that you've dropped so many amazing nuggets for the audience. You guys got a lot of homework to do where you can literally take the strategies that she's given to you, apply them to your business to see how you can create better content that's more driven for the types of clients that you want to work with. So thank you so much for being a guest on our show. I really appreciate talking to you. All right. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. This episode is brought to you by the Rich Life Society. Become a part of our exclusive invite-only Facebook community of like-minded entrepreneurs and build your powerful network to help promote your business, encourage and support you on your journey to the rich life. Just text the letters RLS to the number 31996 so you can instantly gain access to this exclusive party. Thanks so much for listening to the Quit Your 9 to 5 podcast with your hosts, Tamisha and Damian Duncan. We'll catch you next time.